So let me share you two streams of thought about where China's at. China, in effect, overbuilt lithium ion phosphate capacity in a period between, let's say, 2018 and 2022. And as a result, they had stock, stocks. They were sitting on stocks. Now, it pulled a lot of demand through lithium raw material demand through the system. And that's what motivated the price spike that you saw in 2022 and 2023. But they've been through the process of destocking. An important outcome and something that should not be underestimated by anyone really, whether you're an investor or an analyst in the industry, is just how cheap those cells have become in China. This is a key driver to market growth. Cells in China, at least in the LFP category, lithium iron phosphate batteries are now in the in the range of about 60 50 to 60 dollars a kilowatt hour that is about half where the industry thought they would be just as recently as a couple of years ago the speed with which those cells have come down implies that the application in the market is going to be multi multi um uh, multifold basically beyond where it was just three or four years ago because those cheaper cells find new markets and an obvious new market for those cheap cells is static energy storage. Static energy storage of LFP cells is going to motivate mass rollouts of lithium ion battery static energy storage. Just have a look at, at what's happening with respect to home battery costs, especially if you've priced a BYD one recently, I have. And I can assure you their cost has just about halved in, in a very short period of time, less than probably three or four years. Have a look at Tesla's results from last night. Um, their, their static energy storage business is up 160% compared to the same time last year. And I think it's a, there's a good chance that it's motivated by the very, very low cost of sales. Second thing, key point to note about what's happening in the market today. China did a really good job of inspiring pretty ordinary lithium raw material capacity in the market. So domestic supplies from China, low-grade lipidolites, and, um, and a lot of African supply, some of which is pretty ordinary as well, and universally higher cost and historical norms. The reason I'm sharing that with you is, yes, it's part of China's solution to lower the cost of their chemicals, but today it's not cost effective. And I can assure you, there is nobody in China that is feeling comfortable about the cost of some of that raw material supply. It has built out the right-hand side of the cost curve. Ask yourself this one key question. If China has been so successful in motivating lithium raw material supply, why is it still the case today that when you're selling spodumene into China, you're capturing pretty much 100% of the margin at a chemical level? If it was really low cost supply, then there is no way that that would be happening. It's a key question that analysts need to ask themselves when they think about raw material supply. Why is it that spodumene suppliers are still capturing 100% of the chemical margin? And I think you'll find a lot of it is to do with subsidised production um, that's supporting, broadly speaking, lower cost chemicals, but not the lowest cost lithium raw materials because the right hand side of the cost curve has been built out. So what does it all mean? Well, I wish I had, I'm going to sort of close shortly and open up the line to questions, but I wish I had, you know, maybe it was 10 bucks now. I wish I had $10 for every time when the market was down that somebody told us at Pilbara Minerals that we were either in the wrong project or the wrong industry. I can assure you this industry has every chance of surprising to the upside for the speed with which the industry moves. And I hope I've given you a couple of key indicators um, to keep an eye on in respect of what happens next in this industry.